Hi everybody, and everybody hi. Welcome to Louis's channel, Bediology, and today he is busy, so I will do the introduction. Today, we will go deeper about the filial generation, so deep that we cannot reach the bottom. It is a simple word, but has different meanings. So different, it doesn't much. So, let's get it on, all right? Oh yeah. Last time, we learned about the methods or procedures on how to do transmutation on lovebirds. And on that process, we also learned about the filial generation. But do we really know how to use it? What is it for? Are we using it the right way? Well, to understand it, let's go back in time. In the time of Gregor Mendel in the 1800s, he was a monk and a teacher. Today, he is known as the father of modern genetics. His famous work was his pea plant experiments, and these works are centered around hybridization. He was interested in how traits were inherited. Once he had a purebred trait like a pea with a green seed, he crosses it to a purebred pea with yellow seeds. When the offspring grew, he found that all of the peas were yellow. He was expecting half of the seeds will be green and the other half will be yellow. He designates these offsprings as F1 meaning the first filial generation. Filial means son or daughter. So Mendel bred these F1s with each other and yes, it's inbreeding. And these offsprings will be the second filial generation. Mendel noticed that there were 25% green peas and 75% yellow peas in this F2 generation. The green peas disappeared on the F1 but reappeared on the F2 generation. What could be happening? So, Mendel decided that there were factors that could be either recessive or dominant. In this breeding, he learned that the yellow is dominant and the green is recessive. So, in this case, this crossbreeding ends in the second filial generation because he already had the answer to his questions. But Mendel's experiments extended beyond the F2 generation. He bred F3s, F4s, and so on. So this is the first original way of using the F generations in breeding. Today, breeders of different animals adopted this and use it on their breeding. But the problem is that sometimes breeders have their own procedures. Fish breeders may have a different guidelines, different from the guidelines of dog breeders. So let's learn about how the filial generation works in some animal breeding. In rabbits, breeders use the F generations in crossbreeding. In this breeding, they are crossing a purebred to another breed until they end up having that pure breed again. Why is that? They can just breed that pure breed to another pure breed. Why need to degrade the genetic quality? Well, because some breeds are expensive and crossing these breeds until they get a pure breed is the solution. It could be they needed some traits to improve their rabbits, like a doe that can take care and raise lots of kittens. So in rabbits, here's how they use F generations. We will use a Californian white for this crossing. We pair it to a New Zealand rabbit. The offsprings will be our F1s. And when these F1s are ready to breed, we cross them again to another pure Californian. And the offspring will be the second filial generation. We again pair these F2s to another pure Californian and we'll have the third filial generation, which are now 87.5% Californian and 12.5% New Zealand. We again pair those F3s to another pure Californian, and we have the fourth filial generation. And this fourth generation, they now consider this as a pure breed. It may look like a pure breed phenotypically or physically, but as we know, it still has 6.25% DNA of the New Zealand rabbit. So, in genetics, we cannot declare this as pure. And if you remember last time when we did transmutation on dominant mutations, it is exactly the same process. But if you notice, this has a different terminology. Clearly, this is a reverse crossing or back crossing. 
So the F2 in this breeding must be R1 or B1 for the first backcross generation. The F3 must be B2 and so on. This incorrect designation is also used in game fowl and goat breeding. In goats, they do crossbreeding for traits like higher milk production and for disease resistance and fast growth. Native goats need at least a year before slaughter. In a crossbreed, it can be slaughtered as early as 5 months. They also call them F-series. Now, let's look at fish breeding. In beta, they are using Mendel's method, crossing breeds and pairing the offsprings. Pairing F1s equals F2s and pairing F2s with each other creates the third filial generation and so on. We can also follow this in our lovebird breeding when we are doing inbreeding. We do this on pure species when we want to express some desirable traits, like a trait that a grandparent have. On the other side, inbreeding reduces fertility and productivity. Another interesting breeding method is flower horn breeding. Flower horns are hybrids. They are the result of multiple species of cichlids. Improving these flower horns never stops and so hybridization. On flower horns, the P generation is replaced by F0. So a flower horn paired with a vieja will be our F0 and the resulting offsprings will be our F1. We pair those F1s together to get our F2s. If we paired an F1 back to its parent, the results are also called as F2s. Now, an F3 flower horn is a backcross to any of these previous generations. It could be an F2 paired with the F0 or grandparent, or it could be an F2 paired with an F1. Now, about the F4. Anyone from F0 to F3 crossbreed with another cichlid class, the results are called F4. And flower horns are considered as F4s. Flower horn breeders also know the phenotypes of these F generations. An F1 would look like this, and an F2 would look like this, and so on. Now, let's check out dog breeding. Usually, dog breeders use filial generations on crossbreeding. Let's take Labradoodles for an example. A Labradoodle is a cross between a Labrador Retriever and a Poodle. When we cross these pure breeds together, we'll have the first filial generation. When we cross these F1s to another F1 from a different parental cross, we get our F2 generation. But if we bred the F1 to one of its parents or to another purebred, the offsprings will become F1B. B is for backcross. If we backcross the F1B to another purebred, we get an F1BB. Again, when we cross F2 to an F2, we get the F3 generation. When we backcross the F2 with a purebred, the offsprings will become F2B and so on. Once past the F3, they are called multi-generational. So in this breeding, we can identify backcrosses by adding the letter B. And I think this is also a well-organized system. Now, let's look at cat breeding. This breeding is hybridization. This is the savanna cat. It is a hybrid cat from a wild serval cat and a domestic cat. When we cross them together, we get our first filial generation. To get the F2, we need to cross the F1 to another domestic cat. To get the F3, we cross the F2 to another domestic cat. Clearly, this is a back cross. Savannah cat breeders also added codes on these F generations. They added letters A, B, C, and S, B, T. A means one of its parent is not a savanna. If two A savannas mate, their offsprings will be B. When two Bs mate, it will be C, meaning one of its grandparent is an outcross. And when we breed a C to another C, we get the SBT, meaning studbook traditional. These SBTs are considered pure savannas and can be used for show in championship class. Now let's move on and take a look at sheep and goat breeding in the United States. Using the filial generation in their breeding is just the same as dog breeding. Just like our previous example on Labradoodles that they used B to indicate back crossings. Now this is an interesting story about the Valley black nosed sheep, the cutest sheep in the world. They are native to Switzerland. 
In the U.S., these ships are restricted for import, but you can import their seamen. So ship breeders took this for their advantage. Just like transmutation, they use seamen to create a pure valet black nose. They use a female Scottish black face and impregnating her with the valet black nose's sperm. And as we know, the offsprings will be the F1 generation. They then take a female F1 and impregnate her again with the valet black nose's sperm. Because this is a back cross, we add the B so we get the F1B offsprings. We then again impregnate the F1B female with the black nose's sperm and now we will have the F1B1 offsprings. After this, we have the F1B2. So the F1B2 is already 93.75% valet black nose. Anything above 90% is considered pure, just like rabbits. We mentioned earlier that the fourth filial generation is considered pure. So comparing these F1Bs to our R generations, we can see that both of these make sense. It only differs in letters and numbers. But if we look at the percentage, they are exactly the same as well as other formats of many different animal breeding. Each has different perspective on the filial generation. Some say that F1 doesn't only mean hybrids, it can also be a purebred line or a cross. Anything that was bred is an F1. Well, come to think of it, this may be right because the meaning of filial is son or daughter. But as we know, it originated from hybridization from Mendel's experiments and later on was continued to be used in genetics. So the F generation is primarily used for hybridization for a long time. It is used in selective breeding and experiments. Sure, you can use it on any type of breeding if you want, but I guess we need to add what kind of breeding it is. F1 hybrid is the proper term, but maybe we can write F1 inbred or F1 line bred or F1 crossbreed, and if you like, F1 outcross. These are just suggestions to avoid confusions. As you can see, incorrect meaning of the F generation is widespread in animal breeding. Even in plants, growers use the term F1 even though that the plant is self-pollinated. It must be a cross to be an F1. On the internet, you will see posts that has these F generations for sale. What if that breeder was a fish breeder before and he recently bred birds and he applied his knowledge of the F generation to lovebird breeding? So the buyer and the seller without their knowledge that they have a different meaning on F2. The buyer breeds the bird and the results are incorrectly labeled. So if you're seeing these Fs, always ask why and how did it became an F1, F2, F3, backcross and so on. It is better just to write the percentage rather than using F generations. Some posts I see are using percentage. Many beginners are confused with these. You may see 50s, 75s, 80s, etc. We must add details after this. For, for example, 75% Belgium line. This means the bird has 75% genes from a bird from Belgium and 25% from a local bird. In a transmutant, you can write 75% personatus, 25% fishery. Or if you bred two lines from top breeders, instead of using F1, just use 50% ABC line, 50% XYZ line. By doing this, anyone can easily understand each other and can lessen questions and misunderstanding. So I think that's all about it for now. I hope you've learned something new. And if you're new here, you can subscribe to my channel, Birdiology. Make sure to comment, share, like, and whatever. And for those about to subscribe... Yeah! Goodbye everybody and everybody goodbye! God bless you and happy bird keeping! Yeah! Birdiology! Birdiology. Birdiology.